Hey, thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to be looking at the Hornady XTP in 9mm. This is the 115 grain Hornady XTP bullet. Now, I've been shooting 115 grain bullets in a lot of Hornady's over the years, and I do like how they perform. They're nice uh, bullets. They, um, they're pretty darn accurate, and they're not terribly expensive. But when it comes to personal protection, some of those considerations should not be the forefront decision-making considerations. So what we want to do, of course, is we want to test precision. That's the extreme spread of a five-shot group. Accuracy, that's the score on a bullseye target. And consistency, that's the shot-to-shot -shot difference in muzzle velocities, as well as terminal performance. And in terminal performance, we look at a number of variables, depth of penetration being the most important, percent or overall expansion of that bullet, how much it mushrooms, and lastly, the weight retention. If that bullet is going to have the momentum to keep driving deep enough into that target, it has to retain enough mass, and so its weight retention uh, is pretty darn important as well. Overall, these three terminal performance measurements give us a score that we use that's based roughly on the FBI protocol. Now, let me set up this test a little bit. I started by working up a load for these 115 grain bullets. I'm using Unique Powder, and I shot this through the CZ-75B, the FNX, and the Beretta M9, or Model 92FS, actually. And that Beretta really shot these rounds very well, these bullets very well. In fact, this individual Beretta that we have is a very accurate pistol. So I'm using the Beretta uh, in this test, and I started this test late in the winter. And so you'll notice that there's snow on the ground and a winter jacket that I'm wearing. And that was the pack part of our test, precision, accuracy, and consistency. Then a little bit later, I decided to purchase some clear ballistics, ballistic gelatin. And when that arrived, well, along with it arrived spring. And so I went back out to the range, same gun, same ammunition from the same loading session, in fact, and I fired that one round into the ballistic gelatin. So let's go ahead and take a look at the range footage. Okay, now we're going to shoot the Beretta 92FS at the bullseye in the upper right, and uh, now I'm using my Hornady XTPs. Okay, we're clear once again. Let's go up and see how it did. Now I was purposely trying to shoot a little bit higher to avoid where the first round impacted, but unfortunately hit very close. But this stuff is in pretty good shape. And we see there 
is our bullet. Interesting, that's the main part of the bullet. This is a 115 grain Hornady XTP. There's some other material uh, that advanced beyond the bullet. We'll pull this out. I'm curious how much it weighs. Looks like it was tumbling. Now this is interesting. We got about eight inches of uh, projectile penetration. A little bit more of something else that penetrated maybe a little bit of lead fragments, another inch or so, inch, a couple inches, which is interesting. We did a ballistic gelatin, true ballistic gelatin, with real gelatin, test with a 9 millimeter, exact same bullet, and it penetrated also 8 inches. Well, as I alluded to earlier, that Hornady did not do too bad at the pack test. The precision was just over an inch, 1.18 inches, at 15 yards in that five-shot group. Accuracy looked really good. Got a score of 49 with one in the X. And the consistency of these rounds was about 18 feet per second difference or variation in the muzzle velocities. Actually, it's the standard deviation of the muzzle velocities. And this bullet was stepping out pretty good. A little bit over 1,200 feet per second average muzzle velocity. But I'm a little bit concerned about the terminal performance. We only had eight inches of penetration into that NATO block, 20% ballistic gelatin, which isn't a whole lot. In fact, what we're looking for, the sweet spot according to the uh, FBI protocol, is about 11, 12, 13 inches, right around, right around there. This bullet expanded only 138, 139 percent, so not the biggest mushroom in the woods. And unfortunately, it only retained 88 percent of its weight. You know, some of the other premium bullets and personal protection bullets that I've been testing, they're pretty much retaining 99, 100 percent of their weight. So these couple of measurements where it did okay but not great really hurt it in its overall score. The Hornady XTP earned just 305 points out of a total 500 points. Overall, my take on these bullets is that you know they're not a bad bullet, certainly not a terrible bullet, but for personal protection there's a lot of bullets that are quite a bit better than the Hornady XTP. A person could consider these bullets for target practice, those sorts of things. It's a decent hollow point bullet, certainly. But I guess in that context, then why not go to the Hornady HAP, which is a, another hollow point bullet, not designed really for a lot of expansion at all, not really designed as a personal protection bullet, but as a, uh, a hollow point style bullet, very similar to a lot of other hollow point bullets, but the HAP is far less expensive and uh, certainly a good one to be using uh, out at the range with a lot of target practice. So the XTP did okay, it didn't do great, but there are some better choices out there if you're thinking about personal protection bullets. Thanks for watching. Hey, we've got some more stuff coming up. I got a whole list of different bullets and different loads I want to test out. So stay tuned and subscribe if you want to be one of the first to know about our latest videos.